Now, South Korea is making headway using plasma treatments for COVID-19 patients. The therapy involves using blood plasma from recovered patients to treat those still battling the infection. Two people infected with the novel coronavirus completely recovered after receiving infusions of blood plasma from survivors. But experts are still cautious about the effectiveness of the treatment. South Korean officials are expected to announce guidelines on using plasma therapy for virus patients. There aren't any approved treatments for COVID-19, but those, who, those for other diseases are being studied to see if they can be used. Researchers are also experimenting with new treatments. Remdesivir is an antiviral drug that is undergoing clinical trials as a potential COVID-19 treatment. Singapore is taking part in the global phase three trial to see if the drug is effective in treating patients. And the participants include Singapore's National Center for Infectious Diseases, together with the National University Hospital and Singapore General Hospital. Recruitment of patients for the trial started in mid-February. Japan's National Center for Global Health and Medicine and the U.S. National Institutes of Health are partners in the trial. Now, for a closer look, we're joined by Associate Professor David Lai from the Infectious Disease Research and Training Office at NCID. Thank you very much, Professor Lai, for joining us. So let's look at this uh, remdesivir drug. It's new. It's actually used for treating Ebola. So tell us more about this drug and this test. So it is not exactly new, as you know. Um, it was developed for Ebola. It was trialed uh, in the, about four or five years ago, and it failed as an Ebola drug. And because of the ongoing Middle East coronavirus, it was actually tested in, in the laboratory and in, 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 in animal models, and was found to be actually fairly, uh, very effective. In fact, it was the most effective drug in the laboratory and in the mouse model. So uh, when, um, when the COVID-19 hit us, we were looking around for what uh, uh, clinical trials we can run. And uh, like most other experts, this is the drug that we felt is the most promising. So um, well, how it works is essentially by inhibiting how the virus replicates. So you've really got to give it when there's still the virus in your body. And uh, however, it was actually very difficult to get onto this drug. And there's a reason for that. Uh, at the start of the epidemic, when we were first hit with COVID-19, the, the outbreak was mainly in China. And this drug uh, was not and is not in commercial production. So the company basically provided China with most of the drugs and it was very difficult to get onto it. We we're very lucky. We have uh, the Masek Foundation. We have uh, uh, Economic Development Board helping us get in touch with uh, Gilead, the company that makes it, and we we're able to get on the trials. So, um, at this stage, uh, and we were quite lucky because, of course, at the start of the, of the, of the epidemic, uh, there weren't that many sick patients. But as, as we know now, as, as, we, as we pass a thousand mark, we have uh, more and more people uh, getting sicker in intensive care. And this drug has, uh, has so far been tested in 21 patients who were sick enough to be in intensive care in Singapore. You know, Professor Lai, how many patients are you actually targeting to recruit in Singapore and altogether internationally? Uh, the, for the, for the, so th this particular drug is tested in two trials internationally, a moderate uh, trial for 600 patients and a severe trial for 400 patients. In fact, as of about last week, the severe trial completed recruitment worldwide. Uh, we're able to get extension uh, for access to these drugs for our patients. So, so far, we have recruited uh, 21 patients in the severe arm. We were allowed initially 25, but we are now extended to 69. So I'm, I'm very delighted. I just got the news two days ago that we can continue to get access to this drug for our sick patients in Singapore COVID-19. So that is indeed um, good news. But Professor Lai, how are these patients selected? How do you go about choosing who gets this drug? So uh, these are randomized controlled trials. So they have very fixed criteria. Very, uh, uh, clear criteria is not like anyone can get onto it, and we also know that uh, because we have been following our patients for uh, for about 11 weeks now, about 40% of our patients remain very well. These are not the people that need any treatment, but about 50, just over 50% of patients will develop lung infections we call pneumonia, and about half of these patients will develop a fairly severe pneumonia within oxygen. So essentially, this trial. Uh, uh, Gilead runs two trials, 
uh, the moderate arm requires the presence of pneumonia and the severe trial requires the use of oxygen. So, uh, and it has the usual criteria where the patient has to give consent, uh, uh, must have good kidney, good liver function. Uh, luckily for this infection, most patients only have uh, lung failure from the pneumonia. So uh, we have been able to get uh, most patients that need it onto the drugs. Now we know that these trials have not been going on for very long, but can you share some of the preliminary observations so far? Uh, now the, the final results are not out yet, but I've, I've asked uh, uh, my colleagues uh, who are uh, helping this trial in Singapore General, in National Hospital, as well as in, my, in National Center for ID. Uh, because the Gilead trial is actually uh, open label, that means the doctors know which arm the patient uh, is allocated to, uh, most of my colleagues felt that the drug seems to work very well. Uh, the patients uh, improved very quickly. Those who were, who were on oxygen uh, also got off oxygen quite quickly. But I have a caution about, uh, about this observation because in the randomized controlled trial, you only know the final result when uh, all the data are analyzed uh, and uh, uh, that, is, that is the time we'll know the answer. We probably will know the answer in about slightly more than a month. Uh, that's my estimate. Okay, well, keep up the good work. Thanks for speaking to us this evening. Associate Professor David Lai, Senior Consultant and Director at the Infectious Disease Research and Training Office at NCID.